Hallelujah. It is such an awesome day to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Yes, I am so glad to be here with you guys and that we get to worship the Lord together. So we welcome you. We welcome you to service. We welcome those who are viewing us online. And it is just going to be a fantastic day in the house of the Lord. Amen. So, Father, we thank you so much that you are in our midst. We feel you as soon as we walk into this house, God, and we just praise your name today. And thank you, Lord, that you are meeting us in this place. And it is a privilege and honor that we get to come into your house and magnify your name and bring honor and glory to you today. So we just ask, Lord, that our praise just arise to heaven today to be sweet incense to the throne room of heaven today, God, that every Everything that we do brings honor and glory to your name today. We just pray over this service that your anointing falls on the word and on the worship, Father God. And so we just have come to this house today to have an encounter with you. There's an expect an expectancy in our hearts today, God, that you are going to do something fabulous and wonderful and powerful in this service today. And so we thank you and praise you that you are in our midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I am excited that we are here today, that we get to worship together. Uh, we do have a few announcements for you this morning. And so just want to remind you that we have our Christmas family donation that we are still gathering money for. So um, as we take up our morning tithes and offerings, you can give to that. You can give in the app. It will be marked as Christmas family, or you can bring your um, gift and put it in the basket here in front of the table, and all of that money will go to bless a family at Christmas this season. And then tonight... You excited? Faith's really excited. We have a Christmas party tonight. And so we want all of you guys to come and just celebrate the season with us. This is going to be just a fun time of food and fellowship and games. And so pre please bring a side dish or dessert. This will just be finger foods. It won't be a meal, but it will be finger foods enough probably to satisfy you. Um, and so also bring a wrapped gift per person. So we're going to do our dirty Santa white elephant gift exchange. There will be many games and many opportunities for you to win prizes and go home with um, some really fun gifts and gifts that you may or may not want, but uh, we've got gifts <laughs> and we're going to have fun. So um, please note that this is um, tonight at 530. We're starting a little bit early because we know that tomorrow is a work day, school day, so we don't want to make it too, too late, but note that it is 530 tonight. And then next Sunday, we have our candles, communion, and carol service. And so we are excited for this um, intimate Christmas service. So if you know of someone who might not have somewhere to go on for a Christmas service, invite them. And we would love to have them join us. So this is next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. And this will just be such a sweet, intimate time of celebrating Christ and this season. Then we have an evening of carols coming up on Wednesday evening, December 20th at 7 p.m. Um, Brother Tony and Sister Roxanne are going to graciously play the piano for us. And we're just going to sing carols by the piano. And we have some few surprises for you in that service. And it's just going to be a wonderful evening. This is the Wednesday evening right before Christmas. So it'll take us right up to then and it'll just give us all that warm, fuzzy holiday cheer. So then just note that there is no Christmas services on Christmas Eve. So you guys can spend time with your family and just be together. This Wednesday evening at 7 o'clock, we have service, and so we want you to join us either here in service or online, but we will be here um, for uh, our midweek service. That's this Wednesday. Amen. So I think we're up to speed. <laughs> All right. Did you guys come ready to worship this morning? Hallelujah. Would you stand and join us?
Amen. Can you agree that God is awesome? Yes. Amen. Awesome. Yes, he Amen. is. Hallelujah. Oh 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. We give you thanks, Lord. Hallelujah. Who likes some Christmas carols? All right. <laughs> Join with us.
Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Jesus, we praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Before the Lamb of God and see. 
Magnify your name, God. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. 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 so worthy of it all. Amen. Amen. There's just such a sweet presence of the Lord here today. I know that he is in our midst. We can feel him today. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise you, Lord. How many of you guys know that giving is part of our worship? Yes? Yes. This is we just set the stage for the Lord to be here, and we set the stage for us to worship in our giving. And so this morning, if you would prepare your hearts to give, and we want to say our offering declaration together as a family today. So if you would say with me, Father God, I worship you, my faithful, 
unfailing, unlimited source. Because of you, I don't lack, I don't want for any good thing, but I always have all sufficiency, plenty to give as you direct. Thank you for giving us food to eat, seed to sow, and increasing the fruits of righteousness to your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, that we've got our buildings, our homes, and our lands, and our church paid in full. All of our debts are reduced and eliminated. Because I am a tither and a giver and a good steward, you are bringing into our hands large lumps of seed. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor John will serve you. church. How are you all today? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hard to believe that it is it is Christmas time and we're singing Christmas carols. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm just, uh, I like to celebrate the birth of Jesus, but I'm not into, uh, I'm just not into Christmas this year for some reason. I don't know. Um, anyway, I'll get there. I think I'll get there. <laughs> Y'all are very quiet today. Are you there? Yeah. You're not you're not church mouse, mice, right? You are worshipers. You're praisers. You're born again, you're redeemed. You're children of the most high God. Hallelujah. I like to make some noise and Pastor Kim knows very well I like to make noise. Especially when I'm home, I like to make noise because God has done so much for me and I love to run around the house shouting, praising, uh, just giving him all the glory and all the praise. And uh, I, I trust you all have just a wonderful, wonderful Christmas. Um, I know we have a, a few more days and a few more services before Christmas, but I trust that you just really, really enjoy uh, your Christmas season and that it is one that uh, you won't forget. And remember, it's not about the it's not about the gifts. Right. It's not about uh, um, you know taking your Mastercard and maxing it out and then you know paying on it all year long just try just to try to pay off all you know that's not what it's all about either people are going to love you or they're not going to love you right. gift or no gift right, right. so uh, just yeah you you in moderation <laughs> bible tells us that in in moderation we can do all things so um yeah, pastor kim and i we we try to uh uh, we did this a long time ago, cut way down. In fact, it was way before the girls were even born. So, so we've, we've cut down for 43 years. Just kidding. That was a joke, but nobody got it in here. I'll explain it to you after church. <laughs> Are you ready for the Word of God this morning? Yeah. All right. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So, uh, Oh, yes. Sorry, sorry. Before we go there, before we go there this morning, uh, I like to keep up with uh, what's going on in, in Israel. I like to keep up, and I, I really appreciate the fact that Haim uh, sends us videos just about every week. And uh, so, uh, Patrick, if you can get to that video, this is uh, uh, from Haim in Israel. It's about six minutes long. I think you'll really enjoy it.
hear thundering, uh, raining, and we don't stop. We continue uh, to protect Israel, and we get on our rain gear. We go and we do the mission. We continue this. We're going to see this through. Uh, don't worry. And it's also raining missiles. Did you see what hit Tel Aviv? 15 launches. That's the biggest barrage raining down on Tel Aviv on a very large city of ours from the Hamas terrorists. This has to stop. Uh, four of them were intercepted. Four fell into the sea. Six interceptions uh, wasn't clear. Some hit into houses, hit on trees, uh, and, and people ran to bomb shelters, and it was really, really scary. Uh, but we are hitting back hard. Trust us, we're hitting back hard. And, uh, you know, this Hanukkah season, you think of all the families, right, that have evacuated, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of families that fled from the south, uh, fled from the northern border with Hezbollah, where people are dying on that northern border. Friends of ours, Yalom unit operates also in the north, also in the south of Israel, Gaza, and uh, in various places. And so here's the thing is people had to flee and they have nowhere to go. And imagine Hanukkah lighting a candle. I mean, they don't have a house, but they're staying in all kinds of places and it's raining and uh, my heart goes out to them right now in this time. But he, here's something you saw, talking about water, you saw all over the news, one of our big missions is to flood the tunnels with seawater. So yeah, that's something. I wouldn't normally talk about it, but it's on literally all the news, and it's something I've personally been working on as well. Let's hope it works good. And um, and I just want to talk briefly, really quick, about Hanukkah. Because this season, Hanukkah, you know, and... Um, and so, what is Hanukkah? It, it's, it's, um, it's, well, it's been two months. Oh, on the first candle, December 7th, will be exactly two months since this operation, uh, since the uh, evil terrorists attacked us and we had to begin this operation. So, Hanukkah is a festival of freedom and miracles. It's an eight day festival, if you don't know what it is, celebrating the miracle of the rededication. That's what Hanukkah means. It means dedication. When you dedicate your house, you do a Hanukkah, Hanukkah bite. And so, it's rededicating the temple in Jerusalem. 2,200 years ago or so, and there, according to the story, according to the legend, there wasn't enough pure oil left, and there has to be the first press is the pure press. That's the temple, you know? That's what is brought to light the temple menorah, which is, by the way, my tactical symbol. I don't know if you noticed the menorah. And supposedly the siege by those Greeks on Jerusalem, and we weren't able to get more oil through, but according to the legend, uh, miraculously, that light burned for eight days, and uh, that's the rise also of Judah the Maccabee, Judah the Hammer, and he arose. His dad was a high priest, uh, Matityahu, which I named my firstborn son. Matia is short for Matityahu, who is the dad of Judah the Maccabee. He's the high priest. And so they, they went and they killed the pig on the altar, and they said, you can only work worship Zeus. We're Greeks. This is how it goes. Don't worship the God of Israel. Don't serve the God of Israel. They tried to destroy us spiritually as well as physically. And a few, 300, were able to defeat an empire of Greeks. That is just phenomenal. That is miraculous. I think it's just really important if we're talking about light versus darkness, good versus evil, and choosing the light, shining the light. Well, you know, there's a famous Galilean light of the world uh, by name of Rabbi Yeshua in John chapter 10, verse 22, who it says he celebrated the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem, right? And that is a way to say Hanukkah, Feast of Dedication, Feast of Hanukkah. And so I got to open the book of Maccabees just a little bit. Second Maccabees chapter 2, and you see where they're talking about this light, the special nafta or neftar. Uh, and so in, in 2 Maccabees chapter 2, it says, And so one finds in the records of Jeremiah, the prophet ordered those who were being deported to take some of this fire, as he had been told, some special fire. And the prophet, after giving them the law, instructed those who were being deported, like kicked out of Jerusalem because he knew the future, not to forget the commandments of the Lord, nor be led astray in their thoughts upon seeing gold and silver statues and their ornaments, their adornments. And with similar words, he exhorted them that the, that the law should not depart from their hearts. The Bible, the Torah needs to stay in our hearts, all right? And also in the writing of the prophet, having received an oracle, a vision, ordered that the tent, you know, the tent of David, uh, and the Ark of the Covenant should follow with him, and that he should go to the mountain where Moses had gone up and seen the inheritance of God. So what is it? Mount Nebo. And Jeremiah came and found a cave, and he brought there the tent and the Ark of the Altar of Incense, and he sealed up the entrance. And some of those who followed him came to mark the way, but could not find it. When Jeremiah learned of it, he rebuked them and declared, the place shall be unknown 
Until when? Until God gathers his people together and shows his mercy. That's called Aliyah. That's the work of the Aliyah Return Center. That's what we're doing together with you. And then the Lord will disclose where these things are. And the glory of the Lord in the cloud will appear as they were shown in the case of Moses and Solomon asked that the place should be specially consecrated. You remember when the fire came down uh, on the temple with Solomon? The wisdom that Solomon had offering up a dedication of the temple. So it's talking about this dedication uh, of, of the Maccabees and so it's saying the same way the glory will be revealed and just as when Moses prayed and fire came down from heaven and devoured the sacrifices so when Solomon prayed and the fire came down so it will be in the future and, and so it goes and it says and Solomon kept also the eight days so I just wanted to say hey what is coming is going to be glorious be strong and courageous like Moses said in these times get your heart get your heart right and get and be strong Deuteronomy 31 be strong and of good courage don't be afraid don't be afraid of them for the Lord your God he goes with you he will not fail you nor forsake you thank you for lighting a candle every single day of this um, of this uh, eight-day festival light a candle say a prayer for Israel and you yourself don't hide your light under a bushel not now Israel needs you shine forth don't hide your light under a bushel be like a light set up high that everybody can see why did the nations rage and the people imagine a vain? love that guy don't you love him yes. yeah, he is he is awesome and we just need to this this is not this is not Hollywood this is this is reality that's going on and uh, so we want to just continue to pray for uh, for Haim and, and his family and uh, the Knesset Prime Minister Netanyahu the IDF um, this this is reality and we want to pray for them if you have your Bibles this morning uh, turn with me to the book of Joel. The book of Joel. <clears throat> Joel chapter 2. So if you're looking for Joel, you will uh, find Ezekiel and you'll find Daniel. You're in your Old Testament. And then you'll find Hosea. Right after Hosea, you're going to find the book of Joel. Joel chapter 2. And this is a uh, familiar, uh, familiar passage of Scripture. And if you have it, if you would just stand with me this morning as we read Joel chapter 2. <clears throat> I've been talking about God restoring us. Yes, that's right. That we will, we will, we will recoup all and uh, so this morning I want to talk about my message entitled I will restore and in Joel the second chapter we're going to begin in the 23rd verse and it says be glad then you children of Zion and rejoice in the Lord your God for he has given you the former rain moderately and he will cause to come down for you the rain not only the former rain but the latter rain also. And the, your, the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. Here it is in verse 25. It says, And I will restore to you. I will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten, the canker worm, the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. Yes. You will eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the Lord your God that has dealt wondrously with you and my people shall never be ashamed. Hallelujah. Right. And verse 27 says, this is where I want us to go this morning. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people will never be ashamed. Hallelujah. Yes. 
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, that we get to examine your word today. I thank you that it is fresh manna every time we read it. We thank you that it is a light to our path. And we thank you, Father God, that, Lord, you have provided it to us. Lord, I thank you, Father God, that, that, that when we open the pages of your word, immediately light permeates our entire being. And, Father, it gives us hope for the future and joy and it, it it monitors how we are to live as we obey your commands. So Lord, I thank you for the word today. I declare the anointing upon our ears to hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. In Jesus' name, I bless your holy name and give you honor and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. All right. You're welcome to be seated. So I know I've been talking about uh, restoration, that we will recover all. I firmly believe that beyond any shadow of a doubt. Uh, but before we can talk about recovering and before we can talk about restoration, we need to talk about the great I am yes. of restoration. We're going to talk about uh, who he is. Before we can be restored, we need to know who he is. And so just look at your neighbor this morning and say, he will restore. He, will restore. he is restoring even right now as we speak. He is restoring. It may not look like it, doesn't matter how it looks. I am here to tell you God is in motion yes. and he is at work and he is restoring. Amen. So the he is our king. Mm -hmm. Our king is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? I said our King is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is King of kings yes. and He is Lord of lords. Amen. He doesn't care about what our federal government thinks. He doesn't care what the kings of the earth or the nations of the earth think. He doesn't care what the United Nations or the World Health Organization thinks because He has all power. That's right. He has all power, the Bible tells us, all power, all power. in heaven and in earth. Amen. They may not acknowledge his existence, but I assure you, his will is going to be done on earth as it is in heaven. It makes no difference who or what stands against him. His will is going to be done. He is a sovereign God. He's not running for election in 2024, so he doesn't really care what we think. Right. He's not uh, a Republican or a Democrat or an Independent. Right. He never changes his opinions or his word based upon you or me or the Supreme Court uh, or according to woke or political correctness. Right. God is like, who cares about being politically correct when you can be right all the time, every time? So in the Bible, God puts it this way. I am the shepherd. You are the sheep. Now, if you know very much about sheep, that's not really a compliment because sheep, for the most part, are stupid. They're dumb. But we have to know this this morning, that he's the shepherd. He knows. We're the sheep. We don't know, but we follow. That's right. Amen. We follow. He's the potter. You're the clay. Clay doesn't think. Clay just responds to the hands of the potter and his touch. He's the king, we're the servant. He is what Coca-Cola wants you to think they are. He is the real thing. Yes. Open the book and you will find that he is almighty. Amen. He is all-knowing. He is all-powerful. Okay. He is everywhere at all times. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. He is... Our healer. Yes. 
Yes. He said in his word, I am the Lord that healeth you. He said, I am your provider. I am your protector. The blood of my cross pardons you from all of your sin. He said, I am your rock. I am your shelter. I am your fortress. I am your strong tower. I am your shield and defender. He said, I call the stars by name. I am Alpha and Omega. I am having the first word and I will be having the last word. I am the one who is faithful and true. I am the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Call upon me and I will answer you and I will show you great and mighty things. I am the great I am. I am the God that never changes. I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. My truth endures forever. He holds you in the palm of his hand. And no one can take you from his hand. He has promised, as I said, to never leave us nor ever forsake us. He has given his angels charge over you to keep you in all of your ways. He makes the crooked path straight. He said nothing is impossible to those that believe. God's will will be done on earth whether men like it or not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you believe this morning that you are in the kingdom of God? Yes. 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 You don't if you don't obey this. That's right. I didn't write it. <laughs> God did. That's right. You violate God's laws and you will find out how awesome and how powerful he is. Yes. If you lie, if you slander people, if you steal... If you worship any other God than the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are not in the kingdom. The Bible says, I am the Lord, and there is no other God beside me. If you commit murder, God will remember that. Abortion, according to God, is murder. If you endorse a man marrying a man, a woman marrying a woman, God doesn't endorse that, nor has he ever. Right. You can do that politically, and you can do that legally in America. But if you believe in life after death, and if you believe that you will face God at some time, then you got a problem if you believe in that. Right. In the book... It has been written, if you steal your tithes from God, mm -hmm. God says you are a thief. That's right. God is in management. He manages your heartbeat. He manages your every breath. You really don't want to anger God. <laughs> you say that you love God and yet you do not read his word. But how can you love God or say you love his word if you don't read his word? Right. Pharaoh in the Old Testament, who was a dictator, we know that he ordered the death of all babies. That was their form of birth control. We call it abortion in America. Pharaoh had a problem with the Jewish people. He thought that they were increasing too much, too quick, and he thought that there were too many, and he was afraid that they would rise up and that they would overtake his kingdom. So let me ask you this morning, who is your king? Whose kingdom are you in? You're either in the kingdom of light or you're in the kingdom of darkness. Paul said you are either a servant to Jesus Christ or you are a slave to sin and Satan. That is everyone that is here and everyone that is watching. You're either a servant or a slave. Compromise with the world 
the flesh and the devil, is treason in the courts of heaven. The Bible is the law. God is the lawgiver. He is the Supreme Court, not the one in Washington, D.C. God is the Supreme Court. God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want to let you know who the great I am is this morning. How will God's will be done on earth? God's will will be done on earth when God's children start acting like God's children. Yes. Here's the thing. When you say that you live by the Bible, then the Bible ought to control what you do. It ought to control where you go. It ought to control what you say. This, the Bible if you will read it, will take care of every major detail in your life. You will not have to do and fuss trying to come up with a decision. It's already made for you if you will read your Bible and pray. Jesus was born. Herod wanted him dead. And when the wise men came seeking for Jesus... Herod said, he said, when you find the Christ child, come back and tell me where you have found him so that I may come and worship him also. Actually, what he was going to do was he was going to kill the Christ child. The Bible tells us that the wise men weren't wise for just any reason. They were wise enough to figure out exactly what Herod had in mind. And the Bible tells us that they returned home another way. You cannot have a kingdom without servants. Right. Servant is not a word that a lot of people like to hear. But the Bible says, He who is greatest in the kingdom of God is the servant of all. God has no superstars. There are no superstars in the kingdom of God. We are all servants of God. We all do different things, but we are servants to Jesus Christ. Mention the word servant, and people stampede for the back door. <laughs> Many people say that they will serve. Oh, pastor, we will serve. We'll be glad to serve, but we want to serve as a consultant. Oftentimes when you think of the word servant, we've all seen TV shows of, of servants. And when we think of a servant, we think of a, of a pitiful human being. Someone that is bent over, someone that uh, has no will of their own. All they know how to do is to take orders. Usually they're weary, they're mindless, they've been exploited. The attitude today of being a servant in the kingdom of God is this. These I entitle the Beatitudes of the Modern Day Thinker. Blessed are the pushers, for they get their way. Blessed are the hard-boiled, for they never get hurt. Blessed are they who create suffering, for they always get attention. How many of you have family members who have created the art of creating suffering to get attention? Don't raise your hands. <laughs> Blessed are the unconcerned, for they never have to worry about their sin. They've mastered the art of feeling good while not being good. Mastered the art of explaining their sin rather than confessing their sin. Rationalizing and making excuses for their sin is, sin's, or is Satan's substitute for confessing your sin. Blessed are the slave drivers, for they get results. Blessed are the greedy, for they get what they want. Can you imagine... The great things God could do on the earth through us Christians. Oh if we Christians would quit fretting about who is going to get the credit for it. Christ. God has given you and I a duty. 
Our duty is to fight the good fight of faith because he is the king and he is on his way. And when he gets here, he says, my reward is with me. It's going to be a great day, hallelujah, when Jesus shows up. Yes. Sometimes I think about uh, the rapture. I think about going home. Um, and I'm, I'm excited to go home. I've made myself ready to go home. I don't want to go prematurely, right. but I am ready to go home. There was a time when I wasn't ready to go home, but I am ready to go home. The darker this world becomes, it seems the more I am homesick and ready to go home. But I'm not just going to stay at home and cover up my head and wait for Jesus to come. He said, fight the good fight of faith. Be alive, be awake, be alert. Get out there and show yourself and witness. Never be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This world is technologically in the space age, but morally this world is in the stone age. And we are spiritually spiraling in a downhill slide very, very quickly. In Luke chapter 7, verse 11 through 17 is an amazing story. And if you haven't read it, you need to think about reading it this afternoon. Luke chapter 7, 11 through 17. It says in the Bible that Jesus stopped a funeral procession. A widow's son had died. And it says that Jesus, seen this funeral procession passing by, and it said that he had compassion on the widow. It says in the, in the King James that he went over and he touched the beer. It's B-I-E-R. It actually means that Jesus went over and he touched the coffin. And he said, young man, I say to you, arise. Yes. And that boy rose up oh, alive and well. And Jesus presented him to his mother. Yes. Jesus turned that funeral procession into a celebration because don't you know, he is the giver of life. Yeah. You're looking for life? Look to Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus had power. And that is exactly what the church needs in these last days. Unfortunately, as Paul wrote, the church in the last days has a form of godliness, but many are denying the power thereof. We live in a church world that does not want to see the power of God because if we let God out of that box in all of his power and all of his glory, suddenly he's going to destroy all of our religiosity and he will introduce himself to us in power power and might and glory. We have a generation that denies the Bible as the inspired word of God. Boy. Well, pastor, don't talk about miracles. Those are in the past. No, not. No. Don't talk about deliverance ministry because we don't want that disrupting our cozy gathering. Don't talk about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Woo. -hoo -hoo. We want ritual without righteousness. We want hype, but no holiness. We want to do what we want to do and then go home and the rest of the week do whatever we want to do as we wish. But when you have a relationship with Jesus Christ through his word, it directs your life 24 hours a day, night and day. It is your light. It is your bread. It is the foundation upon which you have built your life. And my prayer is for God to shake us. Shake us. It says uh, that the... That 
judgment has to begin in the house of God. We need a return of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to shake the church, first of all. We cannot shake or effectively do anything outside the doors of the church if we're not shaken as believers and we awaken and we judge ourselves first and foremost. And if we have sin in our life, we ask Jesus to, to remove it. We confess our sins. Yes. Proverbs 14, 34 says, Righteousness. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. We do need the power of God. We need the miracle working power of God, but righteous living is what will usher in that power. What made the disciples all of a sudden leave their nets and leave their boats and leave their occupation of, as fishermen? What made the disciples follow Jesus? Here they are, they've left him, they're on a boat, and they're in this, out on the Sea of Galilee. The Bible tells us that the ship is tossed to and fro, the wind is boisterous, the disciples know that their life is in peril and in jeopardy, and Jesus is sound asleep in the back of the boat. They're terrified. They ran to wake up Jesus. And Jesus simply did as what, as what we need to be doing now. He simply spoke to the storm. And he said, peace, be still. Hallelujah. In the Greek, peace, be still means be muzzled. So what Jesus literally did was the wind and the waves. He said, peace be still. He literally grabbed them in the palm of their hand, his hand and he said, be still. Got a storm in your life? You need to speak to that storm and say, be muzzled. Peace be still. Jesus walked to the tomb of Lazarus. And with authority, he spoke, yes. Lazarus, come forth. Yes. Lazarus, still bound in grave clothes, walked out of that tomb. That's power. Yes. That's authority. Yes. He said, behold, I give unto you power and authority yes. to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Speak to your storm. Oh, you say, Pastor, nothing like that's ever going to happen again. Oh, I'm here to tell you, you haven't seen nothing yet. Have you not read the back of the book? Have you not read the book of Revelation? Wake up and get ready. The king is coming in all of his splendor and glory. Hallelujah. We have all accept, we have all eternal life if we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Savior. Are you looking forward to eternal life? Yes. We all have eternal life yes. ahead of us. Well, Pastor, can you prove that? Yes, 1126 says, whosoever believes in me shall never die. Right. Your last breath here is your first breath yes. there. Yes. You don't just go somewhere and wait in limbo for a hundred years. Let me tell you what you do. You literally step from here yes. to there. Jesus said the thief, to the thief on the cross, he said, this day you will be with me in paradise. So I like this. Don't worry about getting older. You're just getting closer to the destination that God has for you. Hallelujah. Don't worry about getting older. With every step that you take, you're one step closer to the destination that God has for you. Jesus right now 
is seated at the right hand of God the Father. Luke 21, 27 says, You shall see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. When the world sees him, the world is going to tremble with fear when Jesus shows up. Why? Because he will rule the world with a rod of iron. Jesus and his saints, that's Jesus and us, coming back on white horses, hallelujah. We will rule the world with the word of God. Hallelujah. We won't have to ask the ACLU or the Supreme Court if it's okay for children to pray in school. It'll be done. We won't have to ask if we can erect statues of the Ten Commandments. It'll be done. Yeah. We will live by the law of God 24-7 over every nation on the planet Earth. And nations will quake and shake at the power and the might of Jesus Christ. Whatever your problem is right now, Jesus... Praise God, he is here this morning and he is walking the aisles of this church. We know what he said in his word. He said, where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of you. So as he walks by this morning, if you have a need, all you got to do is literally reach out and touch him. Hallelujah. He said, touch me and every problem in your life can disappear because the Son of Man is here this morning to seek and to save that which was lost. Jesus is in the house this morning yes, to are. touch you yes. and to heal you and to deliver you and to make you whole. Yes. He can break the back of your problem, whatever that problem is that you've been struggling with for a long time. He will break the back of your problem. Yeah. Nothing, we know nothing, we know nothing is impossible with our God. Yeah. Hallelujah. The only limitation from God working in your life is this right here. Yeah. That's right. The thing that holds God back from working in our lives is this. Our limitation yes. is our mind. But as soon, the moment that you believe and you allow him, he becomes a supernatural, all-powerful, all-knowing force that makes you whole Amen. and drives you to the destiny that God has for you. We don't fear God's power because we know God's character, right? He has all powerful. He is all powerful, but he is love. The Bible tells us that God, if there is one thing that you could say defines God, God is love. He has wisdom. He has justice. He has mercy. He has compassion. God cannot do a foolish thing. He is wisdom. God cannot do evil, uh, do an evil thing because God is inherently good. God is too loving to ever be unkind, and He's too wise to ever make a mistake. Sometimes we have trouble grasping all that God is because sometimes we think that God is like us. We're inconsistent. God's not inconsistent. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Man is inconsistent. One day we're happy, one day we're sad. Some days we're bad, other days we're worse. <laughs> we have happy days, yes. and then we have other days. Right. Well, pastor, I'm just not really myself today. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. God doesn't have a bad Monday. He never takes Prozac saying, I am just so depressed. Mm -hmm. 
Some of you have been taught that God gets mad at you and that he has mood swings up and down. So that makes him like us. Maybe you were in a church that taught you that most of the time God is mad. And I heard this when I, when I grew up in church. Uh, I grew up in a little country church. And I heard that, that if, if you don't behave yourself, boy, God is going to be very mad at you and he is going to punish you. That's right, George. Yeah. Maybe you grew up in a church like that. And, and literally, it would make me tremble in fear. Probably not enough, but I was, I was afraid of God. Not for the right reasons. <clears throat> but you heard that in church and you think, when God's mad at me, he's going to throw out lightnings and thunders and hail and maybe an earthquake and a tsunami. Uh, that's not God. God is love. That's right. Isn't it interesting? We want what God has and is without being us what God is. We want God's power without being what God is, Amen. which is loving and kind and gracious and merciful and patient and long-suffering. I think God's long-suffering and his faithfulness is uncomprehendable. Because when I watch his long suffering, if I would be God, I would have brought the hammer down a long time ago. Thank God I'm not God. Jesus went to the cross. He permitted men to slap him. He permitted men to spit on him. He permitted men to whip him. He permitted men to put a crown of thorns upon his head. They robed him in a scarlet robe and they nailed him to the cross. And the Romans mistook Jesus' meekness for weakness. And I believe that America right now is mistaking God's meekness for weakness. People think God doesn't really care what's going on in the world right now. God doesn't really care what we're doing. Look at all that's going on and we don't see God intervening. Nothing's happening. I'm here to tell you, God has absolute power. His will will be done on the earth. And it's just a matter of time, in his own time, he will demonstrate his awe, his might, and his power on this earth. The Romans slapped Jesus in the face. They spat upon the one who created them. They nailed his hands and his feet to the cross. What did he do? He looked at the Father and he said, well, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they do. Jesus had power to smash them. The Bible tells us Jesus could have called thousands and thousands of angels and yet he died to save mankind. Jesus founded his kingdom on love. How many of you have a problem with patience? You better not raise your hands again if you want to. Oh, I've seen that hand go up and that hand go up and that. <laughs> How many of you stand in front of your microwave? You put something in your microwave and you're so hungry and you're like, you're screaming at the microwave, hurry up, microwave. <laughs> How many of you going through the Chick fil A drive through and you're in a hurry? And you honk. <laughs> and you try, you even at Chick-fil-A, you're trying to push the car that's in front of you. How many of you, you're driving down the street, the light turns yellow and you're still going and the light turns red and you floor it anyway. Now, how many of you have a problem with patience? 
The Bible says love, love, love is patient. Love is patient. Some of you are like a canoe. You're always flipping over. You're always flipping out over nothing. Well, pastor, it's the devil. It's the devil in me. Pastor, it's the devil. No, it's you. It's you. It's you. So let me ask you a question. I'm closing. <clears throat> Going to get out early today. Do you ever wonder why Jesus chose the vocation of that of a carpenter during his life while he was here on earth? Could it be that he knew that those that he cherished the most would come to him broken? See, Jesus was sent to heal the brokenhearted. Yes. And I think probably all of us that are gathered here this morning, we all remember a time in our life when we were badly broken and we were unrepairable. But Jesus, but Jesus... And so we scooped up all of our broken pieces and we came to Jesus and we laid them at the feet of Jesus. And the master carpenter, he didn't just try to glue us back with all of the pieces that were broken. He didn't leave all of those cracks visible in our lives. See, he's not a repairman. He doesn't drive nails into our sides to reattach the parts. No, the master carpenter took the pounding of, your, of the nails on your behalf. His side was pierced in your stead. The master carpenter made a new creation out of this broken mess and your brokenness. Yes. The, past, the master carpenter created something new out of you. The Bible tells us, get ready with that song, Patrick. The Bible tells us that all things, all things become new when we became a new creature in Jesus Christ. It, 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 a repairman wouldn't do. It took a master carpenter to come and to make us brand new and fashion us out of all of our pieces. This week, someone sent Pastor Kim and I a song. And we've been playing this song all week long. And it is awesome. Listen to the words of this beautiful song. Oh, yeah. What was lost in battle, what was taken unlawful, where the enemy has planted his seed, and where health is ailing, and where strength is failing, I will restore to you all of this and more. I will restore to you all of this and more. I will restore, I will restore, I will restore to you all of this and more. I will restore. Breaking and where dreams are forsaken, and 
when it seems what was promised will not be given to you. And where peace is confusion and reality an illusion, I will restore to you all of this and promises never fail. Thank you that you're God who restores your people. Oh, yes, you do. Yes. All of this. Yes. And more. Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 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 So, the other night, <clears throat> uh, Y'all know Roger and uh, Joni are are in uh, where Mississippi, oh, yeah. Georgia, and so uh, I had I had sent this over to Roger on his phone, and he said uh, he texted me the night and he said you know Pastor Ray he said uh, he said Joni's blood pressure just skyrocketed. And he said, we prayed, and then I played this song. And he said, by the time this song was over, her blood pressure was normal. I, I, am, I am believing, I am believing for not only restoration for, for me and my wife, but for all of us. But you got to know who the great I am is, first of all. You got to know what he is capable of. And there is nothing impossible to those who believe. Hallelujah. He is awesome. Beyond awesome. He is awesome. Beyond awesome. Stand with me this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Hallelujah. If you're here this morning and you're saying, Pastor Ray, I need him. I need him to show up big in my life. I'm believing that he is about to restore to you. I'm looking for restoration in a lot of areas of my life. And I'm finding that I'm going through a valley that I never planned on. 
And not a lot of things are changing around as fast as I want to see them change around. But I know that what God is doing in, my, in this valley, I wouldn't trade it for anything because God, God is building something in all of us. Perseverance. Faith to stand upon the word. Unwavering, unshakable faith. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord. So you may be here this morning. You say, Pastor Ray, I need somebody. I need, I need somebody to pray with me this morning and just agree with me. Even as I'm going through this, this it almost feels like a tunnel experience. I'm not seeing anything. But I need somebody to just pray with me and give me a confirmation that everything's going to be all right. If that's you, slip up your hand this morning. We'll just pray with you. Anyone at all this morning? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for those hands, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you that you care about us. Thank you that you are love, your joy, peace. Hallelujah. Oh, show yourself strong, Lord, in defense of those who need you today in Jesus' name. Father, we're reaching out now, Lord, and we're touching Jesus. And we know that we'll be made whole as we touch you, Lord. We give you honor and glory and praise, Father. Hallelujah. I feel the tangible touch of the Lord right now. He is present to heal and to make you whole this day. Jesus, we worship you. We thank you, Lord. You said that you would restore. You said that you would restore. You said that you would restore, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for that restoration right now in Jesus' name. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for restoring. Thank you for restoring. Thank you for the restoration. Oh, hallelujah. What the devil thought that he could steal from us and that he could get away from it, get away with it. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, no. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for paying it back. Oh, thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And more. And more. And more. And more. Hallelujah. And more, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And more. Hallelujah. And more, and more, and more, and more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You said you'd pay it back. And more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, I just, I just, I just feel health, health coming to you, George, right now. Health. Hallelujah. Health. Woo. Hallelujah. All, all and more, all and more. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All of this and more. Thank you, Jesus. I will restore. Thank you, Jesus. 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 You're the glory and the lifter up of Rhonda's head, God, right now, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You got something in store, God. Something in store. Hallelujah. 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 The awe is returning. Hallelujah. The awe. The awe. Hallelujah. You're going to be like, oh, it was awesome. It was awesome. 
Thank you, Lord. I am in awe. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for restoration. All of this and more. More, 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 more. We praise you and thank you. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing in the name of Jesus to Sierra's body in Jesus' name. Not a symptom, not a hiccup. In the name of Jesus, from this moment on, in Jesus' name, complete, hallelujah, complete and total healing. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every part, every organ, every part of her being, complete and whole, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We bless your name, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I will restore. Hallelujah. 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 He says, just trust me. That's all you got to do. Just trust me. Just trust me. Just trust me. Then watch and see. Watch and see what I'll do. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Some prayers that you prayed a long time ago. You thought they're never, they're never going to be answered. You think that God forgot. But he's here to tell you this morning, I have not forgotten. I have not forgotten. I am still God and I will perform what I promised. And we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. We worship you and we praise you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, he's precious. He's precious. His power is here today. Such an awesome way. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Father. 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 I, re I, I agree together today with the saints of God today for a complete and total restoration. Not just as good as she was before, but far better. Yes. Far beyond that, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Yes. Much enhanced capabilities. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We agree with the prayers that have been prayed. Hallelujah. Fullness, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Touch him. Just touch him. Receive of the Lord right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know I'm healed. I know I'm whole. I know it. I know it. I know it. Hallelujah. I will restore. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So precious. So precious. So precious. Oh, my goodness. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. I will restore. How many believe that this morning? How many believe he's a man of his word? He cannot lie. He cannot lie. His word is his word. It is established. Hallelujah. And if that's what it says count on it. Take it to the bank and put it in the vault. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for being so good to us, Lord. Thank you for the beauty of your touch here today. Thank you for the anointing. Hallelujah. That continues to work even when we leave here. Thank you for the anointing that breaks every yoke, every bondage, and every fetter. Lord, I thank you for renewing and restoring us. Thank you that you are the master carpenter. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Lord. We praise you, Lord, that as we leave here today, Lord, we know, 
Hallelujah. You've been in our midst in a beautiful way. We receive the word with gladness and joy. We thank you that we know, hallelujah, you are awesome and you are great. You are the I am. Lord, I thank you that you go with us to our houses and our homes, wherever we are. We literally walk out our salvation. Cause us to be loving and gentle and kind and Christ-like. Everywhere we go in Jesus' name. We love you. We thank you. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on back tonight. We're going to have an awesome time tonight. God bless you all. What time? 5.30. So not 6 o'clock, 5.30. 5.30 tonight, okay? All right. God bless you all. Have an awesome day. Hallelujah. I will restore to you yeah. all of this and more. I've given you my word. I will, I will restore to you all of this and more. I will restore to you all of this and more. Thank you for your promises, Lord. Your promises never fail. Thank you that you're God who restores your people. Oh, yes, you do. All of this.